All right, guys, the purpose of this video is to show you how to make a 36 volt golf cart battery out of some lithium iron phosphate batteries that you can get off of Amazon. This one is by a company called MJBSAN. I'll leave the link below. Uh, these are 100 amp hour batteries, actually, a test of that. So we're going to take one of these apart and see what's in it. I did series uh, three of these, and they claim they could be seriesed up to four. So just a drop-in replacement for golf cart batteries. But when I did that, one of them, I'm not sure if it's this one, uh, but I've got three of these. One of them, uh, the BMS went bad in it. And so I suspect that these don't like to be seriesed, even though they say they are. The safer approach is going to be to take these uh, apart, cut them loose, take the contents out. We'll line them up. We'll top balance them, uh, and then we'll put them together in a 36-volt pack. We'll attach a, a dally 36 volt uh, BMS to them. And this one's good for 150 amps. They normally need about 100 amps for the golf cart. Continuous current. That'll do 150, 300 peak. Get that attached and build the battery pack. And then once the battery pack's built, uh, we should be good to go. So let's walk through the process. I'm sure some of you are going to ask, why not just buy the individual cells um, on these batteries and put them together and avoid all this? Well, two reasons. One, it is literally more expensive to buy the individual prismatic cells uh, than it is to buy these batteries. These are 300 a piece for uh, 100 amp hour, 12 volt. So you should have four cells in there. Uh, so it's cheaper to buy the individual batteries than, than it is the cell, or completed batteries than it is the cells. And number two, shipping times. Right now, ordering these from China has taken three months. Uh, if you get these off of Amazon, you can have them in a week. All right. This is what it looks like on the inside. Here's your batteries, individual little packs. We'll take those apart and um, see how those look. And there is the BMS. Not the prettiest BMS I've seen, and I seriously doubt that that is good for um, 100 amp, but maybe it is. I may uh, save this case. You can always uh, glue this thing back together and reseal it and use it in the future. There's a ton of space in there, as you can imagine. They've just put epoxy around it. Or foam. Actually, spray foam on this one. So it makes getting these things apart uh, fun. So if I cannot get it to come out, I'll have to, um, to cut the battery all the way down. But first, let's get this removed and uh, see what we got. The resin itself from the spray foam is attached to the battery. There's no way I'm getting this bad boy out. I tried prying and... Um, just ain't coming out. So I'm gonna have to cut this dude out. So much for the case.
Okay. Wow. Just what I suspected the thing is glued in there. Like a tick. I'll try to leverage the bottom of the foam. Chemical spray foam is tough stuff. I see why people use it for post holes now. So we're trying to just cut the spray foam and we'll get it to see if we can break it apart this way. end up prying here you want to be careful and not put a lot of torque on the battery to deform it. I'm probably gonna not do that. Okay. Well didn't want to do it but I got to. awesome because it's fairly safe to the bottom of the battery. This dude <laughs> is glued in there. Aggravating sticky foam. So if you ever use great stuff foam, there's there it is. Side note, wear gloves if you don't want sticky hands. Because you will probably get sticky hands taking this apart. But we're almost there. Plastic came off. Plastic covering. So, here are the packs. The battery packs themselves. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is get this covering off. The crap on tape or cap on or however you pronounce it. Yellow tape.
goal, of course, is to get these cells separated. So I'm just going to try to take off this protective coating. And I've seen these cells um, in other manufacturers' uh, packs. There's probably only a few companies making these things. And people are just packing them up in any other way, shape, or form. I like how they've done the terminals on this one. This is interesting. Okay. Uh, let's cut that out of the way. I don't care about the DNS so much, do we? Yeah, I that better. And the balance leads. have a cheap 12 volt um, BMS. I don't know what we'll use it for. We'll probably wait for about half of what it is. I really, really don't think this is a legitimate 100 amp BMS, but all right. We'll say it is. It's got decent connectors on it. Um, of course, the other drawback to this is it doesn't have any kind of Bluetooth connectivity. So you put it in there, you just hope it's working, right? If it fails, it fails. Got another one like that also from China. This was a 36 volt, 160 amp. Now you know, it seems hardly feasible that this is 160 amp. When you look at this is 150 amp. I don't know, this one weighs four times as much with the heat sink, but I don't know, guys. I find it hard to believe that this one is actually rated higher than this one. All right, let's dive into this a little more. Take off the workbench a little bit. Let's see what we got here. These are pouch cells, which I do not like at all. Oh, also, I wonder if these are actually lithium iron phosphate or they're lithium polymer. They claim on the front uh, that these are lithium iron phosphate. All right. So, I'll probably have to leave these intact, stack all three together, positive and negative, positive and negative, and so on. Let's see how these are wired to make sure. And then we'll leave these packs together. We'll just make three packs and slap the BMS on it. This was 10.16 volts. So I need to charge it up or discharge the others. And uh, I'm going to have to get in here to an interesting way they've done the BMS leads. Huh. Yeah. Luckily I've got a soldering iron big enough to take care of all that. So there's one of them. We're going to take the rest of them pack. Uh, I really plan on taking these packs apart, but now that I see how they're constructed, these are going to be a royal pain to, uh, to take apart and uh, reconfigure them. So I'm going to leave them the way they are, it won't hurt anything. It'll be, you know, 12, 24, 36. We'll wire them up in series and put the BMS on them. And we should be good to go. All right, we got two down and uh, one more to go. And these things are stuck so well that I'm having to come cut the uh, styrofoam. Whatever this foam is, great stuff foam. <clears throat> stuff is sticky.
very careful if you do that so you don't hit the battery. Not to pry on these cells. That is some good stuff. I suggest doing this with um, lithium polymer. Lithium iron phosphate is pretty safe. It's not to say that they can't overheat, but you really have to abuse them. I've dropped them before from three feet. Not that I suggest doing that. And they uh, are really tough sales. I decided on the last one to leave the <coughs> BMS attached while I charge them up to max voltage. And then I'll um, put them in series. Probably put them in parallel initially just to balance them out, but then I'll hook them up to top balance them. Okay, we got the batteries all cleaned up. Let's see what they're sitting at. It's 3.10. 3.10 and 3.11. So we probably ought to take all of these and um, make sure that we put them together and top balance them. And the way we do that, we essentially want to have all the positives together, all the negatives together, and then we'll we'll charge those up. So we want to carefully connect these together without shorting anything out like that. That would make for a fun day. <laughs> so you need to be careful. I have actually done where I'll take the batteries up, the connectors before I put them together, just to make sure that you don't hit those together, because uh, it makes for a lot of excitement. These batteries are capable of almost a thousand amps, so you, you definitely want to treat them with respect. All right, let's keep these dudes far apart from each other. Get all the positives together, all the negatives together. And essentially we're going to let each of these equalize out. So this should be 3.10, which is where they're sitting at. So all the positives are connected together, all the negatives are connected together. You obviously don't want to connect positive and negative together to get some really interesting fireworks. But these will now um, sort of balance out. And once that's done, then we'll stick the batteries together. I'll probably go in and remove these uh, balance leads. I don't need those anymore. I'm going to use my own uh, on this um, 12S 36 volt. So each of these you can see is, uh, is one cell. So if we look at it from the perspective of the negative on one of these batteries, just to sort of give you a what-if scenario, that's 3.9. 
better connection here. It's 6.5, and that's 9.8. 13.1. So what we got? One, two, three, four. So four S battery, right? Once again, three point two volts, six point five volts, nine point eight, and thirteen point one. So four S. So uh, essentially, what we're going to have is a three P four S. So three batteries in parallel, four in series. Each of these will become one cell if you want to look at it from that perspective and, and this cell is uh, you know 12 volts and you're going to hook it in series but we want to make sure that we, we hook the battery up uh, the BMS up on this that we go across each of these cells so that we can balance those things out even though they're in series we can balance out the whole unit as a pack that way um, we don't have to worry about the issue we had when we had the whole you know individual battery wired in series. So in, in this case, we're not going to wire these things in you know, 12, 12, and 12. They're going to be wired in you know, just one cell. So you know, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, and so on. So you know, 3.65 times 12 will get you the 36 volt nominal voltage for the entire pack. So we're going to let this sit here in uh, top balance probably a day just to make sure these are new batteries they should be fine but just to be on the safe side we'll make sure we do that then the next thing we'll do is stick it together and we'll wire them up in series and then we'll put the balance leads on them and we'll show you where they go uh, and we'll be able to take the battery up at that point and call it good okay we got the batteries all cleaned up let's see what they're sitting at it's 3.10, 3.10, 3.11. So we probably ought to take all of these and um, make sure that we put them together and top balance them. And the way we do that, we essentially want to have all the positives together, all the negatives together, and then we'll, we'll charge those up. So we want to carefully connect these together without shorting anything up like that. That would make for a fun day. <laughs> so you need to be careful. I have actually done where I'll take the batteries up, the connectors before I put them together, just to make sure that you don't hit those together because uh, it makes for a lot of excitement. These batteries are capable of almost a thousand amps. So you, you definitely want to treat them with respect. All right. Let's keep these dudes far apart from each other. So we get all the positives together, all the negatives together. And essentially we're gonna let each of these equalize out. So this should be 3.10, which is where they're sitting at. So all the positives are connected together, all the negatives are connected together. You obviously don't want to connect positive and negative together to get some really interesting fireworks. But these will now um, sort of balance out. And once that's done, then we'll stick the batteries together. I'll probably go in and remove these uh, balance leads because I don't need those anymore. I'm going to use my own uh, on this. Um, 12S 36 volt. So each of these you can see is uh, is one cell. So if we look at it from the perspective of the negative on one of these batteries, just to sort of give you a what if scenario, that's 3.9. Make a better connection here. It's 6.5, and that's 9.8. 13.1. So what we got? One, two, three, four. So four S battery, right? Once again, three point two volts, six point five volts, nine point eight, and thirteen point one. So four S. So uh, essentially, what we're going to have is a three P four S. So three batteries in parallel, four in series. Each of these will become one cell. If you want to look at it from that perspective, and, and this cell is. Uh, you know, 12 volts, and you're going to hook them in series. But we want to make sure that we, we hook the 
battery up, uh, the BMS up on this that would go across each of these cells so that we can balance those things out even though they're in series. We can balance out the whole unit as a pack. That way um, we don't have to worry about the issue we had when we had the whole you know, individual battery wired in series. So in, in this case, we're not going to wire these things in you know, 12, 12, and 12. They're going to be wired in you know, just one cell, so you know, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, .65, and so on. So you know, 3.65 times 12 will get you the 36 volt nominal voltage for the entire pack. So we're going to let this sit here in uh, top balance, probably a day, just to make sure. These are new batteries. They should be fine. But just to be on the safe side, we'll make sure we do that. Then the next thing we'll do is stick them together, and we'll wire them up in series. And then we'll put the balance leads on them, and we'll show you where they go. Uh, and we'll be able to tape the battery up at that point and call it good. Okay, we got the batteries all cleaned up. Let's see what they're sitting at. It's 3.10, 3.10, and 3.11. So we probably ought to take all of these and um, make sure that we put them together and top balance them. And the way we do that, we essentially want to have all the positives together, all the negatives together, and then we'll, we'll charge those up. So we want to carefully connect these together without shorting anything out like that. That would make for a fun day. <laughs> so you need to be careful. I have actually done where I'll take the batteries up, the connectors before I put them together, just to make sure that you don't hit those together because uh, it makes for a lot of excitement. These batteries are capable of almost a thousand amps. So you, you definitely want to treat them with respect. All right, let's keep these dudes far apart from each other. So we get all the positives together, all the negatives together. And essentially we're going to let each of these equalize out. So this should be 3.10, which is where they're sitting at. So all the positives are connected together, all the negatives are connected together. You obviously don't want to connect positive and negative together to get some really interesting fireworks. But these will now um, sort of balance out. And once that's done, then we'll stick the batteries together. I'll probably go in and remove these uh, balance leads because I don't need those anymore. I'm going to use my own uh, on this. Um, 12S 36 volt. So each of these you can see is uh, is one cell. So if we look at it from the perspective of the negative on one of these batteries, just to sort of give you a what if scenario, that's 3.9. Make a better connection here. It's 6.5, and that's 9.8. 13.1. So what we got? One, two, three, four. So four S battery, right? Once again, three point two volts, six point five volts, nine point eight, and thirteen point one. So four S. So uh, essentially, what we're going to have is a three P four S. So three batteries in parallel, four in series. Each of these will become one cell. If you want to look at it from that perspective, and, and this cell is. Uh, you know, 12 volts, and you're going to hook them in series. But we want to make sure that we, we hook the battery up, uh, the BMS up on this, that we go across each of these cells so that we can balance those things out, even though they're in series. We can balance out the whole unit as a pack. That way, um, we don't have to worry about the issue we had when we had the whole, you know, individual battery wired in series. So in, in this case, we're not going to wire these things in, you know, 12, 12, and 12. They're going to be wired, you know, just one cell. So, you know, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, 3.65, .65, and so on. So, you know, 3.65 times 12 will get you the 36 volt nominal voltage for the entire pack. So, we're going to let this sit here in uh, top balance. 
probably a day just to make sure these are new batteries. They should be fine, but just to be on the safe side, we'll make sure we do that. Then the next thing we'll do is stick them together and we'll wire them up in series. And then we'll put the balance leads on them and we'll show you where they go. Uh, and we'll be able to tape the battery up at that point and call it good. I've got a resistor to load. It's, uh, these are how many watts? 100 watts. 2 ohms. That's 6 ohms in series. 36 volts. We should draw a decent amount of current here. You can actually probably see it. Yeah. I can see it arc a little bit. That dude is drawing some current. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Uh, it is drawing 4 amps. You see the minus uh, 4.7 there? So it's drawing four amps of current. Disconnect that, you should see it go to zero. Zero current. And we'll hook it back up. Give it a couple seconds to catch up. Minus 4.7 amp. So we're looking good. It's getting a little warm which it should, 36 volts times uh, what, four? Uh, almost 160 watts. 40 times four, 160. So yeah, looking good. Got the BMS nice and cold, batteries charged up. Uh, I would call that a successful completion. So at this point in time, all you really have to do is uh, get the leads, the whatever ends you need on here uh, I'll probably leave these ring terminal. I'll put a ring terminal on this one. And uh, like this. <clears throat> and then you can hook that up to your, your battery. Uh, or your uh, golf cart in this case. And um, you'll be good to go. The last step I'll do is take this lead and hook it somewhere on the battery. Just so we can get uh, some temperature measurements in case the pack gets hot. We'll know that um, there's obviously a problem. So I'm going to put it down in between the packs about middle way and put a drop of hot glue on that and hold it in place and then I may go back and wrap this in plastic to help hold it and secure it to it. I'll just take this out of the way this way. It can hook his leads up to it. And I may even extend this lead some. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because again the other source will hook up to it. But I may do that just for fun. Extend that length. But yeah, I'd call that a wrap. Call that a success. It's looking good. Okay, guys, we're going to call that a wrap. I think that was a successful build. We took um, three individual 12-volt, 100-amp-hour batteries from Amazon and uh, that really had, I think, you know, BMS inside that just are, are not that durable. And uh, took the batteries apart, removed the BMS, and... You know, threw them away, stacked those batteries in series so that we had 36 volts, put a Dally BMS on it, uh, one that's rated for 150 amps, continuous 300 amps peak. Now we're able to monitor that through that little Bluetooth module you see on the top of the battery at the end. Uh, and now we can look at it on the phone, see the state of charge, uh, look at the delta of the between the individual cells, which is currently around 7 millivolts, which is excellent. So we now we've got a high current 36 volt battery for uh, under $1,000, including the BMS itself and the batteries. It would have been $1,500 alone if we tried to series the three batteries, and that did not work out well at all. Even though they claim they can series up to four of them, what I found is typically the, there's an overvolt condition and it ends up popping one of the BMSs, in our case, in the 36 volt with the center battery always got popped, the BMS did rendering the battery useless, so that's why we cut them apart and uh, did what we did. Anyway, that's it. Stay tuned. Subscribe for more.